In this video, we will see how Dora queries, stores, and delivers data to users to do their analysis. It's time to see the core of the concept working in practice. In this example, we are going to use two different database connections. Here we are looking at Dora's connection settings, where we have a database named fen underscore br. It refers to a MySQL instance. Here is its URI. This database will be storing data created by us of credit card transactions in Brazil. We'll also use the database connection fin underscore global, which refers to an Oracle instance. And it will also have data created for credit card transactions overseas. Back to our Python notebook, we will run a simple query to the existing credit card table on fin underscore br database. So we will start with the magic command SQL, and I'll use minus v parameter, which stands for verbose. So you can see the information related to data cache usage. The only difference from a usual SQL query to a query executed using Dora is the need to inform the connection name before the schema. In this case, fin underscore br. I'm going to limit the result set to 10 records so the screen will not be full of data. Now you can see this message states that the table doesn't exist or is outdated in the cache. So the data should be recovered from the database. Each table can be set with a number of days for your cache time to live. While the query is running, let's open the step function console to see what's going on. Here we have an execution that is running, and this is our execution. The data recovery process is composed of a few short Lambda processes. The data is searched in the cache. The connection is opened, then data is recovered. The result is transformed. The merge is done with data that were previously loaded and only after this catalog is updated and the data is retrieved by the user that requested it. All done automatically. Due to Dora's architecture, we have virtual infinite scalability to consume large data volumes. Let's say that the data set that we search has 2 million records. The solution will split this amount of data by the batch size informed on the setup and the number of simultaneous connections that Dora's administrator made available for this database. Each piece will be processed in parallel by a Lambda running Spark. This way we can, for instance, have 20 or 50 Lambdas running in parallel ensuring that even the largest data set will be processed. Maybe the most interesting factor about the fact is that this solution is serverless and that we estimate that the first 20,000 queries generated per month will have zero cost in the cloud to retrieve the data. Back to the notebook. The whole process took around 100 seconds. That may seem like a lot, but remember, it only happens for the first time that a table is queried by any user. If we access S3 service on the AWS console, we can see that our table was created in cache. Here we have fin underscore BR database, fin schema. 
credit card table. Here are all data set versions, including the one from today. If we run the same query again, we can now see the message states that the cache is up to date and the response time is much, much shorter. If it's possible that we face a situation to run a specific analysis, we have to query data from a certain table, not like it is now, but how it was a few days ago. How can we do that? Go back in time? Dora has a data versioning feature that allows us to perform this query. I will create a new paragraph. By running the history command on our table, It takes a little time to create the data versioning structure. Done. We can see all existing versions for our credit card table. Let's say that we want the data related to the structure from yesterday, the most recent data from yesterday. Thus, the data version number is 13. So we just have to create a new paragraph. I will copy the same query from down here. And add the command ASOF 13 and I'll call it V13. I'll wait just a moment while Dora searches. Inside our structure for the data that is in V13. And here it is. The credit card table data from yesterday, not today. It's also possible to query multiple versions of the same data in the same query. This allows us to compare the results. It's important to say that rarely will a data analysis use information from only one database. Therefore, let's make things a little more interesting. I'll open this notebook that I had previously established. So here we can see a query where we are trying to retrieve customers' data and their behavior with credit cards. And here it is. In this query, we will use a JSON file that we had previously loaded as a base for customer information. We will cross it with an information table from the FIN underscore global database, which is an Oracle database, plus two more tables from the MySQL database, FIN underscore BR. By running it, you can see that all origins are searched in the cache. Since we've already run queries on these tables, all data is up to date, so the query is not extended to the databases. And here is the output, a result set crossing data from three different technologies across two databases and one FAT file as if they were only one big database using only SQL and with a very low response time. That's all for this video. In the next one, we'll see how to work with results from our analysis integrating with other solutions. See you next time.